chapter 16. At verse 19. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man. Didn't say there was a parable. That's right. Come on. Didn't say the kingdom of God is like in you. It said there was a certain rich man. Not this is what the kingdom of God is like. Come on. Right. This is not what the kingdom of heaven is like. Right. There was. Come on. That's making a statement. He ain't talking about something that resembles. Right, brother. I asked people time ago, they made a statement. How in the world did Jesus know all these things? I said, He knows everything in both worlds. Right. right. Heaven, earth, and other earth. Right. He hears everything that goes wrong. Yes, he does. Somebody said that was way before his time. You must not know what he did here. Come on. He was only in time when he was made flesh. Right, right. Amen. He heard the conversation. He tapped. So how in the world can anybody on earth tell what was going on between this rich man and Abraham? And what nobody on earth heard it? Jesus heard it. He told it like he heard it. That's like I'm going to tell something and say, I knew two certain men. I begin to talk about it. Yeah. Ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that Jesus don't understand. That's right, amen. And the Bible said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Every day. And there was a certain man named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of soul, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his soul, and it came to pass. How did Jesus tell them that? He knew both of them when they lived on the earth. He knew both of them when they left his son. Yep. We didn't believe that tonight. They didn't hear from God. That's right. Come on. And it came to pass that things, the way they were running in this life, took on a change. It looked like that it was going to continue forever. It looked like that this rich man, nothing would never change. Matter of fact, his brother was probably drawing more interest every day. He was getting richer every day. Right. Looked like that nothing was never going to change for Lazarus. His old sores was getting worse every day, but it came to pass. Don't forget tonight, it will always come to pass that your status in this life will be the same. Amen. Oh. Whether it's good or bad, right. Right. your status will not remain the same in this life. Your state will not remain the same. If you're a child of God and it's bad, somewhere it's going to change. Because God don't fail to believe in Oh, amen. And if you got a good state in this life and you're not serving God, it will not stay the same. Somewhere the party will be over. Right. Amen. Come on. I hear somebody getting a call from God tonight. You better listen. That ain't your cell phone going on. That's God calling you because He loves you. Right. 
I preached the message back a while back. We titled it. You can run, but you can't hide from the love of God. The love of God is going to seek you out to save you if He can. Right. You go to hell and be told you reject that God exhausted all of his resources of the riches of his mercy and grace and power right. for you to be saved from a lake of fire. There is a real heaven tonight. I said, eternal world with Jesus. Jesus said, those that are kind and worthy, for that world will come. They're as the angels. They're not angels. They're the children of the resurrection. Amen. There is a real hell tonight. There is. I know a lot of people don't believe in it. Yep. A lot of people tell me, oh, it's just spiritual. That just makes it more worse. Because if it's natural, it burn out. The spiritual, that means it's eternal. That's right. Amen. But everything it describes, just because it's spiritual, don't mean that it won't be real. Right. right. Yeah. My message tonight, if I get down to it, if they won't hear Moses and the prophets, they won't hear one though he come back from the dead. Right. Brother, if you reject the word of God, God has no greater way to call you than the preaching of the gospel. Paul said in Romans 10, the righteousness of God, come on, which is my faith, speaking on this word, say not, we will go to heaven and bring you down to make it real. We will go to the grave and bring you down to be a proof that he's not in the grave. But he's mighty, even in the heart and in the mouth, the word of faith which we preach, that if God shall believe in the heart of the Lord Jesus, and that God's made him from the dead, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. Right. Why does God save you? To save him. That don't say it is the man of serving the sin. That's what you all got me on. Right. God wants you to remain a servant of sin. He leave the way there. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I hope tonight that I'm throw a roadblock between you and hell if you're insane. No. And so I'm going to change, Mother Rivers. I'm going to get it right. I hope you're right. That's my prayer for you. Because I'm not called to preach people into hell. I'm called to preach them out. Right. I'm not called tonight to say get saved because you're scared of hell. No, we serve God because we love Him. Right. But some people, the only way they'll come is a fear of hell. Right, right. But once you get to know God, you realize you're not serving to stay out of hell. You're serving because you love Him. And because you love Him, you're serving to hell you're not going. No. Hallelujah. Once you get acquainted with Jesus and you learn Jesus, hallelujah. My God, you don't want hell. You want hell. You get a taste of heaven on earth. I'm not here to preach you to hell, but out. And there's people under the sound of my voice. And my God, I'm this kid. And I can love it. Right now, what are you breathing? There are people dying lost. Right, yeah, come on. What do they say? You have a few minutes? What have they broke it down? Out of 7 billion people in the world, just like that, people are dying. Right, right. Right left. 
They say that only 11% of people out of 7 billion even say that they're confessed Christians. That don't mean them is living right and serving right. God. Yeah. Come on, amen. 39% say they heard the gospel, but they ain't believing enough to obey it and accept Jesus as Savior. And 50% of the world is an idolatry. Yep, man. There's an awakening. I like the man of God preached last night. The only hope is a Holy Ghost tonight. Yes, come on. Yes, come on. Right, brother. I don't know how much of a work God done for both Tim's dad and Galeville that night. But I know he was in bad shape when he brought him there. And I know God done something for him physically. And in his body. But the point I'm making, I know he got up on that wheelchair and they walked. And I don't know how, what stages, and I know a lot of people is praying for me, what they're not done. It's God. But the point I'm making, God spoke to me that night. There in that sermon. He said, What needs to be done in this world? Nothing, nothing but the Holy Ghost can do it. Yeah. Nothing but the Holy Ghost can do what needs to be done in this generation. Amen. The devil don't answer to nothing yes. but Jesus Christ. He don't answer to religion. He don't answer to problem. He don't answer to good people. He answers to the word of God in your mind and your faith in God. Amen. It changed. We don't know why that some people never face their judgment to the end of the world. Right. The word of God declares that there's some people live in hypocrisy and in sin all their life. And everything they do is fat and flourish. Right. Some men's sins go before and some men's follow. Right. But you will give an account. Right. When I stand before God, I can't say, tell him, Brother Joy. Tell Jesus. Yeah. No. Ain't nobody gonna come to your aid that day. Well, you'll look around and there'll be nobody to blame. That's right. You'll look around and there'll be nobody to blame. Amen. Come on. Come on with it. Come on, that's right. Many years ago, back in my area serving God, man came to the church and I attended by the river Reed was my pastor there. Was my pastor for about ten years. He was real good to me. He gave me more opportunities to preach than really what I could handle. We had three churches. We had two buses. We was busing people from Mobile to Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, Mobile to Michael Cos. People got off the buses 35 and 40 singing and speaking in tongues. Coming to church revival was on. I had my own church, but we worked together. And I was going out on the road, but a man came. He and Brother Reed grew up together, and Brother Reed could come to the Lord, and this man went over and said, He told me, he said, I had this dream. He said, The great white throne judgment had come, or the judgment had come. He didn't know about it. He said, But I did all my thing. He said the books were open and said there was a lot of stuff in the books. A lot of records. He said, but then the book was open. And he said, I'm waiting. As he turned the pages, but he don't call my name. And he said he gets in the book down to the last page. 